Hello everyone, welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me. So today <laughs> I am doing a full face of Pat McGrath Labs. Ooh. So let's just get the main kind of concern out of the way. Yes, this brand is pricey and yes, I spent a lot of money. But you guys have been asking for this, and let's be real, YouTube is my main source of income. I'm only able to do this because of you guys, so of course I'm going to do it for you. And I don't need an excuse to spend money on makeup, so... <laughs> so like most of my full face reviews, I usually start off by buying one or two products, and then I quite like them, and then I go and buy a full face off a brand, because I feel like it might be worth it. So this was a case with Pat McGrath as well. I... <laughs> I have never owned anything from Pat McGrath before, so I ordered three palettes <laughs> from the website, but there was a sale. So. so I ordered those and I absolutely love them. And then that combined with you guys asking me to do it, I ordered a full face. So it was expensive, but here's the deal. So to anyone who doesn't know who Pat McGrath is, she is an absolutely iconic, how do you explain it? She is a makeup artist, a real makeup artist. She's not an influencer, she's not. She is an absolutely incredible, extremely talented, extremely um, innovative makeup artist. If you're into like the fashion industry, you will see these looks and you'll know them. And it, that that was her <laughs> who, who made these looks. She is an absolute icon. When I first started doing makeup years and years and years ago before influencers, I know people look up to influencers now, but in terms of being a makeup artist, Pat McGrath was one of the makeup artists I really, really looked up to and really wanted to um, strive to kind of um, be at her level, which I mean, I never will because <laughs> she's so incredible. So I love her. Getting that out of the way, that's not gonna cloud my judgment off a brand. I'm gonna be completely honest because um, that's what I do for you guys. I'm gonna talk about price point as I go through for each individual product and um, whether or not I think it's worth it. One thing I do want to say really quickly, I'm not affiliated with Pat McGrath Labs in any way, but there will be affiliate links below. It's basically from a website called Magic Links, where they have thousands of companies um, that allow you to kind of, as, as a YouTuber or influencer, allow you to kind of get a, a commission off products. And you know, considering how much I spent on this brand, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can get a little bit back, but it's up to you if you use that link, you absolutely don't have to. And like I said, it's not gonna make me be like, oh my God, I love everything. Okay, okay, let's start off with some skin prep. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the Lip Fetish Lip Balm. And this is in Noir, which is this black lip balm here. And it's literally like gray, the color itself. This is one of the first products I got along with the eyeshadow palettes. And you guys know me, I only wear black. So when I saw this and like a gray lip balm, I was like, oh my God, I absolutely have to have it. Obviously it doesn't go on gray. It's very, very hydrating on a lip without being overly glossy or sticky or tacky. It feels really incredible. It doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't taste like anything, <laughs> but it feels really, really nice on the lip. I do have issues with lip balms, um, bong. Oh my God, I do have issues with lip balms because I find um, they kind of just sit on my lip and then I start to get like, you know that really like claggy skin here? And then you kind of have to like peel it, peel it off. So this one, however, doesn't do that. Let's discuss packaging and the price point. The packaging is quite, it's not, I say heavy, it's heavy compared to a lip balm. And I don't think that's a bad thing to me. Heavy means <laughs> expensive, it means luxury. The component is a component, I sound like I sound like a scientist. You can see it has a kind of this lip detail on the front here. Really, really, really nice. I would happily whack that out in public. <laughs> Jesus. You could sell me anything with packaging. You could put dog poo in a really nice box and I'll be like, I need that box. The packaging has been very clearly thought through. I really like the actual box itself. It kind of has this tuck in motion. I am um, I, I'm keeping this box. And in terms of like really, really liking the lip balm, when I did my second order, I ordered another one <laughs> because I just have this kind of like irrational fear that it's gonna go away or sell out, or maybe it's like a limited edition. I don't know it's a limited edition, you know? So I bought two because it's one of the first lip balms that I felt um, is nice 
nice on my lip and actually actually does something. So moving on to our next product. This is a Skin Fetish Sublime Perfecting Primer. So on the back here, it says smooths, hydrates, and preps skin for a soft focus blurred effect. Oh, you can't see it. You can't see it anyway. Um, runway tested, mother approved. Okay, so, so I haven't yet used this product. There's a few things I look for in my primers. As somebody who has I say this in, I swear, every video, oily dehydrator skin. I like it to smooth, but I don't like it to be greasy. I don't like it to have that silicone texture. I don't like to feel it on my skin, basically. Oh, it smells good. It smells really good. Okay, so let's start with a little bit up here on the forehead. So it feels almost like a fluid. It doesn't, it's not like a gel. It's not like, um, it's not quite a serum. Ooh. Oh, you know what? That's like disappeared. Not disappeared, but I, I can't feel that on my skin. That's perfect. That's the exact texture. Oh, it smells really good. <laughs> oh shit. That's the exact texture I look for with my serums. It'll be interesting to see how it does around my nose area. This is where I get a lot of trouble. So I get dehydrated skin here, but then also oily skin. It smells so good. It smells like, it does smell slightly perfumed. Um but it's not overwhelming. God, it really reminds me of something. I love how that sits on my skin. It's not greasy in any way. It's not silky. It's not like silicone-y. It literally, I feel like I've used um, a, um, like a gel moisturizer. I really like that. You maybe don't have to use as many pumps as I just used. Considering its price point, I wouldn't use as many pumps as I just used. So here's what we're gonna do. There's quite a few shimmers and glitters in the eyeshadow palettes, and I'm thinking that's gonna fall onto the face. So I'm gonna do my eyes first and then move on to the skin. Some things that weren't part of a brand yet, um, eyebrow pencil, I don't think, unless I really missed it, and an eyeshadow primer. So I'm gonna use my MAC eyeshadow primer in Painterly, just to kind of get us going. And then, you guys, I haven't yet used the purples in these palettes, and you all know, if you know me, you know I'm dying to use the purples, so. <laughs> Just let me, let me have this. One thing that I really look for in brands, whether I'm deciding to use that brand in my professional kit or whether I'm using it in my like, what I call my like YouTube kit, um, which are two separate things, is if I enjoy using the product. So if I feel like the product is hard work, if I feel like um, a certain product compromises a whole look, then I, I really don't like to use that brand. And I really look for consistency throughout the brand as well. Are all the products really good? Or is there a product that is terrible, but the rest are really good? Or are they all mediocre, you know? So, so far, so good. The primer I now really, does my skin look smoother here? Is that just me? Tell me, tell me below. Let me know if you think it looks smoother. Was that just me being like, oh my God, I'm smooth. So as I mentioned, I got three palettes. So they're not, they're not cheap palettes, let's say that. Do I think they're worth, okay, so <laughs> here's, a, here's a thing with the price of products. Everyone's version of what is affordable is different. Do I think that this is worth the money? I'm wearing, I'm wearing pajama shorts and I don't want the mirror to show it. Let's first of all talk about the packaging. I like sustainable packaging, of course I do, cardboard, everything like that, however, it is really, really nice to have a palette that has a detailed mirror and, and a good mirror. It's not one of those plasticky like um, mirrors that you get in most palettes. It has a heavy feeling. It's made from like a solid kind of plastic. The logo on the front here and details on the back in that gold. This to me is of course a luxury product. And you know what? Sometimes it's nice to have a luxury thing. So I have used the different textures in palettes already. The shimmers are really, really nice. The glittery tones, the mattes are really nice also. And you have like these metallics, which are absolutely incredible. One thing I did recently is I posted a picture and I used a color from each of these palettes in a video recently. And one thing I did was I posted a picture and a lot of people were like, the coverage doesn't look good. The pigmentation doesn't look very good because I used this color here. And that was just my, artistic choice of that look. I wanted my skin to look um, like it had a metallic shine. So I literally just patted a tiny amount of the color on the lid so you could still see my skin through it. I wanted my skin to look metallic, but they do have really, really nice pigmentation. The texture is really nice and creamy as well. So I want to start with this kind of like earthier tone first. We're just gonna keep it nice and simple today. 
I'm just going to use this to kind of hollow out the eye area, the socket right here. It just goes on so, it goes on so easy, so smooth. It's really, it's a really, really nice product to use. And you compare it to like cheaper brands and you really can tell the difference. There really is a difference in the product. The packaging alone, to me, justifies the product. I can smell the primer on my skin and it's really, it smells really good. It's not like, I didn't put any there. It's not overpowering, it's just a really subtle smell. I'm gonna take this deeper purple. It's like a plum. Yeah, it's so nice. It's so, so nice. They just blend out really nicely. They work really, really well together. I have to be honest with you guys. When this brand first kind of like launched, I was very excited. I was like, oh, incredible. Because when makeup artists launch their own brand, I'm like, they've been in the industry. They know what's needed. They know what's lacking. They've probably worked on some amazingly creative products and a lot of the time you'll find like big big makeup artists are like really involved in product development for brands as well so they've had some like kind of experience in that when i saw the price point i was like no that's that's really taking the piss but and now i've used like other like you know professional brands and luxury brands like viziart for example whose palettes are about a hundred and something i can see why um they're a little bit pricier. The colour goes on really nice. It's really sometimes a bit of a um, hit or miss with matte eyeshadows. I feel like if a brand have a really good matte eyeshadow formula, then I'm going to stick with them because mattes can get really patchy and then trying to build up a matte colour on top of another matte can be can be hard work because it can go really patchy and separate. And I feel like you have to think as well, I feel like someone like Pat McGrath wouldn't put her name to a terrible product. This is the um, more metallic texture. In the picture that I um, spoke about before, I used like the glitter and I didn't use anything underneath. It was just my skin. And whereas this is more of a, the metallic. And this is a product dry as well. I haven't um, wet the brush in any way. So I'm gonna take a bit of like this glittery shade and just whack that on the inside corner. Okay, I regret that, but that's fine. And then <laughs> we're gonna go in with this purple shimmery shade and I'm going to use my finger and just tap that right on top of the eyeshadow. <sighs> yes. So what I'm going to do on the inside corner here, I'm going to take the deep purple that we used underneath and I'm just going to go just like this and I'm going to fill in that little gap there with that metallic so we get that little bit of shine just there. Let's try and cover that silvery colour with this. I don't know what I was thinking with that silver. I just saw it. I was like, oh, that's a really nice colour and got carried away. So the colours that are like these glittery, like duo tone are more like, um, you know, you can put them on top of the other colours in the palette and they kind of change up the colour a little bit. But also as well, you can use them if you just want like a wash of something, a wash of colour, but you don't want it to be a boring wash of colour, you know? <laughs> okay, so I do have a mascara, but I'm gonna do that, um, when am I gonna do that? But I'm gonna do that when I do lashes. So I have the Ultra Glide Eye Pencil. I haven't used this before. I think I just got black, I can't remember. There's a sharp, it comes with a sharpener. Yes, I needed a sharpener. So Perma, Perma Gel Ultra Glide Eye Pencil Extreme Black. So I'm gonna use that along the bottom waterline here. Wow, that, that colour builds up very, very quickly. I'm just gonna stop about here and kind of bring it down a little bit just so we don't darken that. Um, wow, wow, <laughs> okay. It's very soft and very smooth. It's a very nice eye pencil, it's very smooth. It glides on really easily. I do find with some eyeliners, they kind of go patchy on a waterline on me. So we'll leave that on, see how long before it goes patchy if it does. Okay, so let's move on to the face. Obviously I use a shimmer and a glitter. There's some slight fallout. So I'm gonna get take a pump of a primer. I'm just gonna put that on a cotton pad here. Yeah. This is how I get rid of fallout. Instead of having to use like a wipe after you've prepped the skin, just use the last product that you went on with. 
mine was for primer. So let's start with the foundation. This is the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfecting Foundation. And I got the shade Light Medium 14. And there was like a bundle on the website. So it came with the foundation, the powder, and also these two brushes. So these did come in packaging, but I took them out and sanitized the heads quickly um, yesterday. So I haven't actually used them yet. Brushes are really nice. By looking at them, I'm not like, okay, nothing special, but I have to wait till I use them. I'm gonna use this for foundation, obviously this for powder. This kind of brush, that domed, kind of bunched up top is really, really nice for liquid products. Um, so it'll be great to see how that does. Oh, we're gonna do it now. So the packaging for the foundation is like a perfume bottle. Look at that. Ooh. It is quite heavy. It feels very like luxury. Ooh. Okay, that was a little bit more liquidy than I, I actually, you know what? I didn't even look into what kind of finish this foundation gives. I was just like, yeah. Okay, brush is really nice, really soft. Okay, the color match is slightly too yellow for me, but again, but that's my fault <laughs> from picking, I chose myself on the website. I could have gone maybe one shade lighter, but you know what, it'll be okay on camera. So this is kind of like, it's actually quite a light, coverage is it light? I feel like it's giving me quite good coverage but I'm not getting um it doesn't feel heavy so I'm finding <laughs> I'm finding the coverage really confusing because it's covering really well but at the same time it's it's a really natural finish so it's almost like okay so I'm gonna say medium coverage with a very natural kind of glowy finish to it so let's get let's get into my nose here so this is usually where i would have a little bit of texture a little bit of a problem it gets quite dry on that inside corner here but it's actually looking really really good really good so the color is slightly yellow for me that's fine what do you think of the finish i really it looks really really natural slightly shiny and glowy. Let's see how that sits on the skin. Let's see if it oxidizes in any way because usually if I get a foundation that's way too yellow, it does get darker and darker and darker. Okay, so the concealer, Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection Concealer. This is the shade LM11. It says weightless, full coverage, high performance, runway tested. Was this weightless too? Let me just have a little look here. Oh, the foundation, sorry. It says buildable, perfecting coverage, weightless texture, sublime satin finish. Yeah, universal formula for all skin types. Ah, okay. Now I'm hoping I went a little bit lighter with the concealer. Yeah, weightless really is the best way to describe this. It feels weightless. <laughs> I'm gonna go in with more of a precision brush on the inside corner there, because I wanna carve out that shape with a concealer. Wow. Does, okay, so is it just me, or is that concealer blurring slightly also? I love that concealer. The concealer looks like it's smoothed out. Is that just me, or does it, it, it kind of looks like it has like a blur to it? Does it say, where's the packaging? It, it definitely has some kind of blurring thing going on. Even if it's not meant to, I refuse to believe it doesn't. <laughs> okay, so let's go in with the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfecting Setting Powder. This is a shade Light Medium 2, and it was a shade that was recommended alongside the foundation. So it's a loose powder. We'll take the powder brush here that came with it too. It has like this um, net system, which I'm not, a huge fan of. Yeah, it's exactly what it says. Nice and sheer, not too heavy. It's not interfering with a shade of foundation, which is good. Usually sometimes I find that loose powders, once when it sits on like a nice um, hydrating foundation or a really nice natural foundation, you kind of get this um, patchiness where it's almost like the powder has congealed with the, the moisture off the foundation, whereas this one hasn't. I'm gonna let that settle in a little bit because I have a highlighter, but it's also a cream. So let's move on to a lip product. So this is the Lip Fetish, and this is if a shade blow up. Gold and white just has this like luxury feel. And of course I've gone for something really natural because I don't really wear color. My lips are really nice and smooth. They feel really soft from that lip balm. It's just kind of all sunken into my lip. Yeah, that's perfect for me because I don't like color. <laughs> I don't like putting color on my lip. Okay, let's go in now with the Chroma Lux Highlight Cream. So this is the pale gold. I believe there was one in blue packaging as well. I can't remember the shade. 
Um, now I did swatch this yesterday because I wanted to see what the texture was like. And you need the smallest, smallest amount. I'm going to use like a little dab because, oh my God, it is strong. It's not by any means a natural highlight. It does have like a um, gold tone to it. You can see there. Okay, so I just sprayed a little bit of Fix Plus because <laughs> I really don't think you meant to use that on top of powder, which is a dumb mistake. Um, I maybe shouldn't have got this colour. I feel like it's not a good colour for me. That will look amazing on, on a deeper skin tone. On me, oh! On me it's a little bit too yellow. Um, and considering I've gone yellow with everything, the foundation shade and my skin tone is quite yellow anyway, um, I'm not too fond of that colour. Um, the product itself is really, really nice. It has that kind of um, catching the light shine to it. It is slightly too glittery for my personal taste. You can see like the, the individual chunks of glitter. There was a highlighting powder palette and I wish I got it. Maybe I'm going to buy it. I just tried to make a more affordable choice because I was buying so much, but I actually wish I went for the powder instead. Oh well. Okay, so let's move on to the mascara. This is the Fetish Eyes Mascara. This is quite a big, chunkier brush. I think it'll be nice to give a lot of volume. Let's have a little look. Yeah, that it does. Wow. My lashes are awful. I think I burn these lashes on um, a cigarette lighter. I used to smoke. I haven't known for like many, many, many years. And then ever since, it's kind of like ruined my lashes. And they stick up and then this, um, these lashes stick right down. So it's kind of good because then I can see if it's gonna curl them or not. Oh my God, they've gone really, really long though. I'm gonna have to comb through them. I feel like mascaras with that kind of brush, that really like, um, big, big brush. You need good lashes in the first place. And I just feel like mine are awful. I'm gonna stick some lashes on. These aren't Pat McGrath ones. These are just to finish up the whole look, sort out my brows, and then we will be done. And then we can reconvene and reevaluate. And just to um, touch base on the liner on my waterline, it's actually stayed on. It hasn't gone patchy in any way at all. I didn't put any on the inside corner here because of the light purple. I, I stopped it there. So that's great. All right, guys, so this is the finished look with some lashes. Okay, let's let's talk about everything. Quick run through. Primer, incredible. Lip balm, amazing. What else to do? Eyeshadow palettes, an investment, but absolutely go for it. Choose one that you like all the colours and, and, you know, even if that's the last one you buy from the brand, get one. I think they're absolutely amazing. Just the pigmentation you get, the, the blendability is stunning. Absolutely stunning. I can't describe the way it is using them, but it's just so easy. It's so fluid. It just, it just works. Everything works. Eye pencil is really, really good. I think if you have leaky eyes or watery eyes, this would be the pencil for you. Foundation, I'm really, really surprised about. I don't like a lot of foundations. There is maybe one foundation I use all the time, and that's a BB cream. And then somewhere I'm like, yeah, I liked that, but I wouldn't use it every day. If I had the right colour in this foundation, I would I would use it every day. I'm actually going to try and get the right colour because it's really, really nice. Concealer, I really think is beautiful. It looks like it has a nice blur to it. Face powder, great as well. Not 100% mattifying. This is my face just a few minutes later, and it has a slight shine to it. I'm not angry about it. Um, it looks quite nice if you like to be shiny, but if you maybe are quite oily and you want it like a matte finish, um, or you just even just press it into the skin a little bit more to be fair. Um, yeah, fine. Just realized I haven't done my eyebrows. So that's fine, whatever. Okay, um, what else did you use? That highlighter, not for me. I didn't like it really. The color choice, my fault. You guys know how I feel about glitter. I don't like it. I like my high, j just in general, and I like my highlighters to be more metallic than glittery. So I will definitely be investing in the highlighter palette. I think that looks really, really nice. The brushes are really, really nice. This brush in particular, the foundation brush, applied this, applied the foundation really, really well. Overall, I'm really, really, really incredibly happy with the brand. And to be honest, I didn't expect any less. Really, really stunning products. I can't feel the foundation on my skin, which is really, really nice. Um, Yeah, 
really, really happy, really pleased. Okay guys, so I'd love to know your opinions below. Let me know what you think of a product, how you think they went on. Do you own any of the products? Let me know what you think of those. Thank you so much for joining me. Let me know if there's any other brands you wanna see a full face off. Maybe give my wallet a rest for a little bit. Maybe recommend me some good drugstore brands. Um, Yeah, but anyway, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, what day is it today? Friday. So I will see you on Sunday. Thank you so much, guys. Bye.